changing the subject. What's it like then? What is what like? You know, did you ever do it with a woman? Wow, you guys haven't experienced anything adult. Sex, work, and growing old, all denied to you. What's up guys, and welcome back to another episode of... Free Random Games. I'm so sorry you're joining us, Gary, said a female voice. The face comes into focus and you recognize the woman. Mrs. Baxter, where is this? You're back in my classroom. I'm very confused. What am I doing here? She was the woman that taught you to read and write. But that was over 30 years ago. We are just waiting for the rest of the class, and then we're going on a bus. Yeah, in about 40 years if you're f***ing lucky. Said an angry teenage voice. Language Jonathan. What do you mean by 40 years? We are all waiting for the rest of the class to arrive. Three down, 21 to go. Wooty fucking do. I remember you. You're Jonathan Bauer. You're that kid that drowned. Yep, it's true what they say. That river is dangerous. Answered Jonathan with a wry smile. Ooh, okay. That was a whole lot to take in at the beginning of an episode. Our first game is called The Classroom, which has robust features such as voice acting and lip syncing and angry Reggie fils <laughs> Holy crap, it was really hard not to laugh out loud throughout that entire cutscene. <laughs> So we have John, we have Tim, and we have Mrs. Baxter, and something really weird is going on in this classroom. We've only seen Mrs. Baxter and John. Where is Tim? Oh, here's Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi, I'm Gary. Who are you? You don't remember me, do you? Said the boy. I was only here for a week before I got too ill. I died a few months later from leukemia. I vaguely remember going to church, looking at a small white coffin. We were told you had become an angel. I was only seven, and I can't even remember your name. Tim Harris, and I've been here for 30 years. He has not put that time to waste. Look at the great work Tim has produced. He is a bright little student. Interrupted Mrs. Baxter cheerfully, pointing at the walls. We do have a lot of fun here. Added Mrs. Baxter even chirpier. The look on Tim's face said otherwise. It spoke of a deep hatred that can only develop over a long period of time. They're pretty good drawings, Tim. Very colorful. Thanks, but I don't have all the colors. If you find any crayons, could you give them to me? Okay. So, we're looking for crayons. I love this game so much. <laughs> this is already going to be the highlight of this series. I can already tell. Uh... Crayons! Where would I find crayons? Something tells me this is not your typical classroom. Right, because apparently Tim is dead, John is dead, we haven't seen Mrs. Baxter in 30 years, so she could be dead, and I'm walking around in some kind of green fart haze in my three-piece suit like I've got a thumb up my butt. <laughs> Where are these colors? Okay, there's nothing going on here. How about the bookshelf? Conversations with Tom by Angela Lockwood. Although they don't always understand each other, Jeff and Tom form an unbreakable bond. That's nice. What? Why would I care about that? Go away. Language in the Blood, Book 1, by Angela Lockwood. Until the outbreak of the First World War, young Cameron Blair would have liked nothing better than to stay in the I, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Okay then, we're just gonna not click on the talkative book. Oh, 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 here we go. I have a red crayon in my pocket. Haha, <laughs> you can click on some of them. Okay, so we're gonna go back to Tim. We're gonna return <laughs> his color. Here is the red crayon. Thanks, Gary. Now I need a yellow. What is this place? We don't know. That boo just gives us a blank stare if we ask her. I think it's what they call purgatory. We have to wait here until the powers that be have decided to let us go up to heaven. I'm not very up to date on religion, but isn't purgatory a place of suffering, where you have to atone for your sins? Dunno, it seems terribly unfair, but here we are, waiting. Maybe this is just what happens when you die. You wait for the rest of your classmates, then a big bus takes you up to heaven. Can we not just leave? No, the door, 
The windows are not normal. Okay, that was kind of informative. That was actually very informative. Why does this kid know exactly what's going on here? There isn't a whole lot in this room, okay? There are a bunch of desks, they all have chairs on them, except for the one with the crayon in it and this one. And this one I can't do anything with. So, I'm guessing I probably need to talk to you idiots? John, do you have the yellow crayon? Yes, I stole it off Tim's desk. I didn't like that creepy picture he did of me. I stuck it in my desk. I suppose you can give it back to him now. Why did you steal the yellow when he made a drawing of you drowning? Right, you drowned, and he drew you drowning. Interesting. So what is the other drawing, then? Uh... A picture of Tim, right at the moment of his death. Right. Okay, and then this one... A picture one. of Jonathan, at the moment of his death. Okay... So... Who is he working on now? Here is the yellow crayon. Thanks again. Now I just need the blue one to finish this drawing. Anyway, changing the subject. What's it like then? What is what like? You know, did you ever do it with a woman? Wow, you guys haven't experienced anything adult. Sex, work, and growing old, all denied to you. Overcome with the pain for the two youngsters, you think of your own pain, of your own loss. You didn't mind dying, but leaving your distraught wife and young son with the chaos you left behind now grips you. Yeah, I know. I know nothing of adult life. So tell me. I want details. Tim Edge is closer ready to listen. I am married to Lisa. Was married to Lisa. You pause as you catch yourself. I had a six-year-old son, Kevin. So yes, Tim. I have done it with a woman, and more than once. You wink with a tear filling your eye. So? How did you die? You feel their urgency in wanting to know everything there's to know about being an adult male. I was driving home from work and hit a patch of ice. Then out of control I crashed. We know when you are lying. Tim said, his blue eyes piercing into you. I told you, I drove back from work and I lost control of the car. We really do know when you are lying. Echoed Jonathan. Oh my god. Between the writing and seeing her over my shoulder just being creepy. Game of the year, okay? I'm just gonna say it right now. This is the best game I have ever played. Uh, Blue Crayon. Do you have Blue Crayon, lady? Huh? Mrs. Baxter, what about you? How long have you been here? Yeah. She stares back blankly. She's a robot or a hologram. Go on, punch her. Urged Jonathan with relish. I'm not punching Mrs. Baxter. Even if she is a hologram, it doesn't seem right. That's kinda lame. How about you, tough guy? Have you seen the blue? Do you have the blue crayon? I did, but Mrs. Baxter confiscated it. Why did she confiscate it? No reason. You know teachers. Anyway, tell us about Lisa. Lisa is perfect. Perfect. Are you sure? You wanted the year before to be forgotten. Now these two boys, who are prying into your soul, they want you to dig up the final nasty chapter of your life. After the birth of our son, things changed between Lisa and me. The boy took a lot of energy from both of us. My career had taken off, and I was working long hours. You start describing the year that led up to your death. Aware of the boy's stern looks, you realize they would know if you lied. She started to do more hours too, hoping to put her career back on track. We saw even less of each other. I initially thought this was normal. Okay. okay. Now, now we're, we're getting, getting somewhere. somewhere. The boys say in unison. She became distant and one time when I came into the room, I caught her hanging up the phone. I confronted her, asked bluntly if she was having an affair. Lisa denied it. Go on Gary. Urged him in a way that made you feel very cold. A fateful day she called, saying that she'd be working late. I waited outside the office and saw her and a man leaving. I followed them to a nearby hotel. My worst fears were confirmed. She was having an affair. Okay. Uh, th that's all very interesting, I suppose, but I'm just looking for a blue crayon. <laughs> Not a life story. So you took it? You knew this whole time. Do you have the blue crayon? Yes, I confiscated it from John. He was writing on the walls. There you are. 
It's in my desk. That I was looking, I see. I was looking at the desk when it was closed. <laughs> Can I have that? Thank you. Okay, it is now in my hand. Hello, Tim. You Here may have the blue crayon. That is the drawing finished. That's a pretty good drawing. Yeah, I know. If you give it to Mrs. Baxter, she'll hang it up on the wall like the others. Okay then. Uh, I guess I will do that. Here is Timothy's drawing. Oh good. I'll put it on the wall straight away. It's very good. It's a picture of you and your car, just before you died. Do you notice anything about it? Let me see. Ah yes. When I drove home, my mind was in turmoil. The thought of her leaving me brought me to tears. I was going too fast and my vision was blurred with tears. The car skidded on some ice. I regained control but then, in a moment of madness, I let go of the wheel and let the car run into oncoming traffic. So, you killed yourself? I guess so, yes. You finally admit to yourself. But you're still lying to us. We gave you time, come clean with us. Said Jonathan, his eyes wide and dark in anger. I don't know what you mean. Look closely at the picture. Where was Kevin? Demanded Tim. Oh my god, Kevin, he was in the car. Touching the drawing. You see, Kevin was asleep in the back seat. It, it was a spur of the moment thing. When Lisa called and told me she had to work late, I didn't call a babysitter. I put Kevin in the car seat and rushed to her place of work. The boys looked at each other. You realize Tim and Jonathan are your judge and jury. He'd fallen asleep. I was too wrapped up in my grief and anger. I, I, I had forgotten he was there. The boys nodded to each other in agreement and soon after the door opened. Go, Gary. You can leave us now. Said Mrs. Baxter trying to comfort you. You have left the classroom. To what, you don't know. The end. Three random games. Our next game is called A Dead Man's Day, and honestly, this was the reason that I wanted to make this video today, because this looks really good, but I've gotta say, it's already got a tough act to follow. So as far as I know, this is a game where you play as a cowboy who's stuck reliving the same day over and over again, and you need to try to break the loop. So we're playing cards, we've got two pair, we're against these two gentlemen, and a fine looking young lady comes over. Maybe she'd like to sit down and play some cards, give us a dance, Bring us a drink. Shoot one of my competitors in the head. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's not get too testy here. Let's. What did I do? <laughs> I'm the one person at the table that didn't do anything worth getting shot in the head over. So we go back six hours. Hello, creepy crow. Interesting. Okay. So we're alive again, and that was the dog that walked by. We need to pay really close attention to every little thing that's happening. Like the fact that uh, it's real stormy outside. So from what I can tell, this guy is being a little butthole and isn't gonna let me leave the room until I distract him with a bone. Do you want this? Will this please you, puppers? Yeah, there we go. And the crow seems to approve. So I'm curious if that's already changed something. Maybe because technically the dog did walk through the cutscene. I'm gonna see if anything is different this time around because I I do have a limited amount of time until eventually I'm shot again. Hello, lady. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Which reminds me, I need to have a word with you, ma'am. Thank you, appreciate it. Can I maybe convince you to shoot the troublemakers and not little me? <laughs> Just minding my own business, playing my aces over eights. I would really appreciate that. Maybe we just go to the source and deal with the troublemakers? What do you want? Hi, how are you? Oh, you want a drink? Uh, well, you're not paying attention, but I can bring you a drink, right? Here you go. Now, could you maybe not cause any trouble and get me killed? What is it that you're looking at here? Oh, debtor. Owe me $500. That's why she got pissed off. So now that he's gone, I'm good, right? There's no way he's coming back from that, right? Like, he should be off crawling into a tauntaun trying to survive. <laughs> but I've noticed one interesting thing in that she keeps waving and then she waves back. 
and then she signals her over, but she can't. Strange. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but if he does come back, I don't think I want him to have this book. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to hold on to it. Ah, oh, crap. So he did come back, and the dog did walk through shot again, but it was different. Right, the dog had a bit of a yellow glow, whereas all these ones have a purple glow. So does that mean I didn't do the correct thing for them, but I did do the correct thing for the dog? Right? You point at your book, you tell her to go away, and she shoots you in the head. And then as she walks away, the sheriff fires all of his shots, misses every one of them, and then I eat it. <laughs> okay, we're learning. And once we do something correctly, it sticks. So despite the fact that I died, the dog is still fed, which means we probably didn't do everything we needed to do with the debt collector, right? He still caused trouble. No, he's still gone. So I guess giving him the drink stuck? And there is something interesting going on between you two. I'm curious if I can make that little hookup happen. Interesting. So with him gone, it has to be that I need to get rid of the book, right? If he's gonna come back, so long as he doesn't have the book, we should be fine. So can I hide it somewhere? Can I go back here maybe? Oh, okay. We'll, we'll just chuck this uh, here-ish. <laughs> yeah, that'll do, maybe. Now I need to figure out what exactly I can do for you, Sheriff. Because you're missing all your shots. <laughs> I really need you to hit them if she decides to cause trouble again. It looks like he's trying to find something. Right, he's roaming around, scratching his head, looking at the ground. Oh, and he came back. Okay, I didn't see that last time. So now when you sit down, you don't have your book. Oh, and the crow seems to like that maybe? Oh, yes, yes, here we go. Okay, he's yellow now. He doesn't have the book, but you're all still purple. So is that bad? <laughs> Come on, lady, D don't do it. It's missing. So you don't know. Hmm. Oh, oh. Turns out doesn't really matter. <laughs> and then you're gonna miss every shot again, and I'm gonna eat it again. Okay, well, making progress, I guess. So we don't need to get him a drink anymore. We don't need to worry about him anymore because he doesn't have his book. He's yellowed out, just like the dog. Now we need to worry about these two and I can't interact with them, which makes me think that there has to be something that I'm missing in one of these back rooms, right? There's a whole lot of stuff that I can interact with back here, like I can pick up all of this crap, <laughs> but I really doubt I need to Skyrim them with a barrel. Uh, anything on the shelves? There's a whole lot of bottles and pickles and barrels. There's a deck of cards, but the outcome of the game doesn't really matter, does it? That might be something to remember for later. We have, oh, 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 key. I think there was a locked door back here, wasn't there? Yeah, I didn't think anything of it. Okay, so if we unlock you, <laughs> now, anything of use here? There's a whole lot of jewelry and a bunch of little trinkets, and what is this? Oh, you're looking for your glasses. That's why you're missing all your shots. Oh, it makes so much more sense now. Okay, so you should have no problem firing off all those rounds and actually hitting her this time around. That's why he was holding his card so close to his face. These are the things that you see, but you don't realize. Really interesting. So I got a little bit of time left. Is there any way for me to interact with you at all? Right? She wants to talk to you. Maybe I can uh, stop you from playing? No. <laughs> <laughs> little crotchety old guy. Uh, I don't suppose I could get him a drink or something like that to distract him. But right, if he stops playing, then she doesn't have to dance, and yeah, then she can go over. How about it, old man? No? Okay, well, the mayor is looking a little bit better. Maybe this is all that needs to happen, right? This guy's still gonna die, but I don't really care about him. I care about me. <laughs> so you're gonna go ahead and piss her off. Uh-huh. And then, oh, oh. Wait, what? The mayor recognized? And then, why are you, why are you still missing? There's apparently a dollar 75 in here. I don't suppose I could take it and then give it to you to stop playing, right? 
No. I'm just gonna keep throwing things at your feet until you stop, for the love of God. What can I use the money for? Can I pay you to leave? No. I need to do something to... Oh. What if I do... Yeah, there we go. Now you can snuggle up with your bosomy friend, right? Yeah. Okay, so she'll be busy with conversation and maybe a little bit less testy. I have absolutely no problem with the sheriff getting something out of this too. <laughs> okay, are we good? Oh, even the crow has changed color. Right, that's good. And all of the dancers. Which I hadn't recognized. Oh, and my hand is different! Right, I'm not playing aces over eights, I got four twos, even though I didn't change the deck of cards. So things are different. Right, it only takes one more shuffle, one slight change, so you're gonna come over. And you're going to... Sit down and join us? Okay. Uh... Oh, no, don't, don't, don't shoot them, please! I'm just gonna get up and... Leave? Or not? <laughs> what? What? I just pelted her with a bottle. Okay, I, I win. Three random games. Our final game is called Handle with Care, which I think is about smashing stuff as a hipster, but I'm not entirely sure. What an incredible opportunity for you to be now a trainee in our museum. For the first time in history, we have gathered the two biggest collections of ancient relics in one room. Your work is to put the last three relics in their assigned place. Go now, the director. Sounds easy enough, right? We have three giant relics and no idea what the controls are. Um, okay. What, 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 what are the con what are the controls? Where do I put this thing? Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Why would they hire me? Does it look like I have the legs for this work? Okay, okay. I'm guessing this one has to go over here somewhere. No? Where do I put the... Oh, maybe upstairs. Right? Would, would that make sense? There's, there's kind of a stair... No! No, 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 no. There we go. I am just kind of intuitively getting this. I still don't really understand what the controls are. I'm just kind of doing my best to balance with Wazd and the mouse and uh, a little bit of everything. Okay, okay, here we go. We're going upstairs with, with the... What's... What's smashed? I didn't smash anything! I'm on the second floor and something smashed on the first floor and you're blaming me? Is this a joke? Oh, you gotta be kidding. Come on, come on. Come on, walk forward. What? Mm, that, that was my bad. That one's my bad too. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll take full credit for those. Okay, there we go. We'll just sweep this up. No one will ever know the better. Relic number two, a gigantic piece of column. This thing must weigh like 500 pounds, but I'm still going to expertly navigate my way through <laughs> all of these things. Okay, you gotta watch the legs. That, that's, that's the trick. Really? How are things breaking behind me? If I leave them and they're balanced, they shouldn't tip over eventually. That's bogus. God, you think there'll be somebody here helping out, right? It definitely was that column that I touched, no? How did you break? I didn't even so much as fart in your direction. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, fine, one left, and then this game is over with, right? <laughs> I have a thousand points. Ah, uh, yes, Ming Dynasty vase. Very valuable, very important. Let's rush this, okay? It's lunchtime. My tiny little prepubescent legs aren't a match for my incredibly manly flannel. But no, no, don't cha-cha your way around. <laughs> oh, we're gonna nail this one. This one is going to be flawless. Come on, come on, come on. Work with me, work with me. Oh, go, 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 go. You're home free, you're home free. No, no, that's, that's, that's fine, that's fine. That's what I'm talking about! Three random games. You know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Three Random Games, guys. And this video is just a perfect example of why I love making this series. Because there are so many games out there that are just too short to make a full video on, despite the fact that they're like, side-splittingly hilarious and awful, or really well-made and interesting, I would just never get to play them otherwise. So uh, if you guys want to see more, as always, be sure to leave a like on this video, let me know, give me some suggestions, I'm always looking for more, and I'll be sure to return with more random games 
soon. And thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Yeah.